Hey, how's it going? And welcome back to Consuming Cinema, a show about making and pairing food and drinks from popular movies and TV shows. Today, to celebrate the holiday of 420, we are making a Pineapple Express with couscous and maybe something else from Pineapple Express. If you haven't seen Pineapple Express, it's a 2008 stoner action comedy directed by David Gordon Green, which follows Dale Denton, a hapless stoner who works as a process server. Wow, your servant? Like... Butler? A chauffeur? No, I mean he actually serves people court documents while dressing up in a variety of elaborate disguises. Disguise? But Dale mostly loves his job because it allows him to smoke massive amounts of marijuana all day. Hey. <laughs> and after buying the rarest kind of weed known to man, Pineapple Express, from his bubby-loving pot dealer Saul Silver, Dale smokes a joint of the one-of-a-kind strain in his car just before he then witnesses a murder and soon finds himself on the run alongside Saul from the very man who sold Saul the Pineapple Express. Now, while there are actually a lot of awesome and memorable culinary moments in this movie involving both both food as well as drinks, there is certainly one that stands out more than anything. Couscous. The food's so nice they named it twice. But before we start our couscous, we're first gonna make a quick pickle, or quickle, if you will, for both inside of and on top of our couscous. Our quickle starts with three Persian cucumbers, which we will cut into half moons and toss into a plastic container, to which we'll add two to three cloves of garlic, which we'll simply crush with our palm before adding to the container. Then we're gonna add some crushed red pepper, followed by a quarter of a red onion, cut into slices in addition to some white vinegar, as well as some black peppercorns, as well as a couple teaspoons of salt. Then I let this pickle in the fridge while I went to work, and while I was at work, I remembered that I forgot a few crucial pickling ingredients, like this big sprig of dill, which you want to press between the cavities of the cucumbers, as well as a teaspoon of turmeric, in addition to a teaspoon of sugar as well as some more vinegar for good measure. Now, if you want to do this overnight like I did, you can put it in the fridge or around just an hour at room temperature. And now it's time to begin our couscous, which starts in a medium saucepan to which we'll add a tablespoon of olive oil, as well as a tablespoon of butter, as well as the rest of our red onion. And then we're gonna let those onions cook down a little bit before adding a teaspoon of cumin, followed by a teaspoon of turmeric, in addition to a teaspoon of black pepper, as well as a teaspoon of salt. And we'll mix that all together. Now we're gonna add three to four cloves of garlic, crushed or chopped, followed by the real star of the show, one and a half cups of couscous. I'm using Israeli couscous because I like the way it looks visually. We're then gonna stir that all together and allow that couscous to toast in the pan a bit. And then we're gonna add a pinch of saffron, which in addition to the turmeric will give our couscous both a beautiful aroma as well as that lovely yellow color we see in Angie's mom's couscous in the movie. So we'll mix in that saffron, and then we're gonna gradually add two cups of chicken stock that we've had warming on the other burner. Generally, you wanna keep to about a one and a half to one ratio of stock to couscous. And once you've stirred in your chicken stock, you then wanna let your couscous boil for about five minutes before lowering the heat and allowing it to simmer until 15 minutes or until your couscous is nice and soft and fluffy. And when it is, we will then add the zest and juice of one lemon. Now I'm just gonna cover this while we move back over to plate. And to plate our couscous, we'll first start in a big bowl, to which we'll add some of our pickled vegetables, which we'll toss in the couscous, followed by a handful or around a quarter cup of cherry tomatoes, and we'll toss that in as well. Then we're gonna add a couple teaspoons of dill, and we'll mix that in as well followed by a small handful of feta. Now you don't wanna go overboard on the feta, but rather add a nice creamy contrast to our acidic and warm couscous. And to plate our couscous, we will add a few scoops into a smaller bowl. But you know, as beautiful as this couscous is, this meal doesn't really scream 420. So how could we stonerify couscous? If only there was another, more weed-friendly dish that we could make alongside of it. Oh, oh, chicken fries! Sick. Ah yes, chicken fries. Perfect. If you don't know what chicken fries are, they are a hybrid of chicken tenders and french fries, created by Burger King in 2005 before being discontinued in 2012 and then becoming a permanent addition to their menu in 2015. Maybe you want to be a french fry, huh? Maybe I do! Our chicken fries start with one pound of ground chicken, to which we'll add two teaspoons of garlic powder in addition to three quarters of a teaspoon of MSG, which often gets an unfairly bad rep. Then we're going to add two 
teaspoons of salt, and then we're just gonna mix this chicken all together, and once your seasoning is evenly incorporated, we're gonna start forming our chicken fries. To form your chicken fries, simply form a fry shape out of a small bit of the ground chicken. You really don't need a lot of chicken to make one fry, and I found that rolling the chicken in between my hands was an excellent method for doing this. I recommend getting a bowl of water to rinse your hands in so that they won't get too covered in chicken. Repeat the process until you have all of your chicken fries formed. And once all of your chicken fries are formed, we're then going to put them in the freezer for 5 to 10 minutes in order to allow them to hold their shape. Now it's time to start breading our chicken fries. Our breading station consists of three bowls. Into the first we will add a cup of panko breadcrumbs, into the middle we will add two eggs, and into the third bowl we will add a cup of flour. And then we will season both our panko and our flour with a teaspoon of salt each, a half a teaspoon of MSG each, and a generous teaspoon of black pepper, a teaspoon of garlic powder, and then only into our panko mix we will also add a half a teaspoon of paprika, and whisk together our eggs, and we also want to prep a sheet pan covered in panko, onto which we'll rest our breaded chicken fries. Then we're going to begin the breading process, which will go dry, wet, dry, starting with our flour, and then dipping the chicken into the egg batter, and then by dipping it into our panko breading. I recommend using one hand for the flour and then reserving your other hand to dip into the egg and panko. So continue with our dry, wet, dry order until you've breaded all your chicken fries. I also want to mention that this specific chicken fry recipe comes from one of the all-time great internet chefs, Mr. Joshua Weissman. So please, check out his video here and I'll also put a link to his channel below. And once your chicken fries are fully breaded, we're gonna head over to the stove to fry them. To fry our chicken fries, we want to heat a Dutch oven filled with oil to 350 degrees Fahrenheit. And we want to prep another sheet pan with the wire rack for them to cool on. I'll first test the frying by frying up a couple chicken nuggets that I made alongside my chicken fries to use as a test fry. And after three to four minutes, we will remove our chicken nuggets from the oil and allow them to cool. I actually got myself a little side of ranch to test these nuggies, and I have to say, they tasted spectacular. So again, into 350 degree oil, fry up your chicken fries in small batches for three to four minutes until they are golden brown and perfectly crispy. And once they're done, simply set them on a wired rack to cool, and once your chicken fries are all fried, it's time to head over to plate. And to plate your chicken fries, all you gotta do is simply lay a few down on top of your couscous. I tried to sort of shape it into a weed leaf, but it didn't really work. And there you have it, your chicken fried couscous is finally done. Now, what to pair with this chicken fried couscous? Well, there just so happens to be a cocktail called the Pineapple Express. But the thing is, there's no one set recipe for this cocktail, but rather many different variations. So for mine, I wanted to make a sort of hybrid of all of them. Like if this one from Martha Stewart, and this one from Caitlin Patterson had a baby, and then this one from Jeffrey Zakarian, and this one from Freddie Sarkis had a baby, and then... And by some miracle, those two babies met and fucked. This would be the baby cocktail they made, and it starts in a small shaker tin, to which we'll add two ounces of light rum. As I've used before, I'm using Plantation 3 Star, which is the best bang for your buck light rum on the market, followed by a handful of fresh pineapple, about a quarter of a cup, in addition to the juice of half a lime. Then we're gonna add a bar spoon of Velvet Falernum, as well as another staple of tiki cocktails, a bar spoon of Allspice Dram, followed by a dash of Angostura bitters. And then we're gonna add three quarters of an ounce of honey ginger syrup, which similar to other syrups we've made on this show, is a simple combination of half a cup of honey mixed with half a cup of water and one whole head of ginger, which has been peeled and sliced. Then we're gonna bring this mix to a boil before simmering for 15 to 20 minutes and we'll just strain and funnel that syrup into a bottle and refrigerate it until we're ready to make our cocktail. So add in that three quarters of an ounce of honey ginger syrup, in addition to an ounce of pineapple juice. And now we will muddle this mix together with a muddler before then adding two to three drops of CBD oil. I'm actually using a mix of CBD and THC because as we can see by this handy map of the US, different states have different laws regarding marijuana and CBD use. CBD comes from two different sources, hemp plants and cannabis plants. Both CBD and THC are types of cannabinoids. And while CBD or cannabidiol is a non-psychoactive kind, THC or tetrahydrocannabinol is the psychoactive 
objective kind. It's actually very scientific. I won't go into it right now. But whatever kind you use, just try and make sure it's one that's neutral in flavor. So add a couple tinctures of CBD into our tin, and then we're gonna add some ice to our big tin, and lock in our small tin, and give our cocktail a good shake. Then we're gonna pour this drink into a really cool pineapple glass that I found on Amazon that was part of a set that I can put a link for below, and then we're gonna strain in our cocktail, and top the drink with some crushed ice. And I tried to strain in a bit more of the cocktail, as I thought to myself, this is my moment. But after this little spill here, I then started thinking to myself, Oh, I made a mistake. But after a quick cleanup, we will then garnish this cocktail with a slice of pineapple. I ended up actually swapping out that garnish with another smaller pineapple garnish. Then we'll additionally garnish with a few pineapple fronds. And I also felt like our chicken fried couscous was in need of a sauce. So I whipped up this version of my personal favorite Burger King sauce, Zesty Sauce, or rather a Harissa Zesty Sauce, which I made by combining equal parts Harissa with equal parts mayo and equal parts mustard. I used a rather nice grainy mustard, and we're also going to add one half part horseradish, which can become a little overpowering, hence why we're only using half the amount. Then I bottled up this sauce, and additionally added about a tablespoon or so of olive oil to help the Harissa Zesty Sauce emulsify, and then we'll simply squirt on a bit of our Harissa Zesty Sauce, and garnish with a few more of our pickled vegetables, in addition to a pinch more of dill which I neglected to get on camera. And at long last, your Pineapple Express with couscous and chicken fries is finally done! And now there's nothing left to do but but to taste it. So we'll start by getting a bite of our chicken fry couscous, and try not to eat this couscous like an infant and make a total mess of it like I did. Like a baby. <laughs> <laughs> and then we'll grab a bite of just a chicken fry, and I have to say, this is some five-star stoner cuisine. As was my intention, the chicken fries act as a sort of fried chicken kofta. My whole super stone vision I had here was trying to combine Mediterranean cuisine with the Burger King menu, and I actually truthfully feel like I sort of succeeded masterfully in that department. But how does this chicken fried couscous pair with the Pineapple Express? Well, first of all, that is a spectacularly refreshing cocktail. I feel like a, like a slice of butter melting on top of a big old pile of flapjacks. My spill actually allowed for more of the pineapple pulp to get into the drink, so I actually almost encourage a slightly open pour here. The sweet and tart notes of the Pineapple Express pair perfectly with the spicy, salty couscous and chicken fries. It's almost kind of like getting a sweet, fruity, refreshing drink from a fast food restaurant. And while many may see this dish as a culinary abomination, it is truly a delicious abomination. And one I am giving two big thumbs up. If you like the channel, please like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. Please leave any video suggestions in the comments below. Full recipes will be included in a link in the video description. Follow us on all forms of social media at Consuming Cinema. And don't forget to join us next week when we make a pairing from Pulp Fiction. Thank you for watching, and have a happy and safe 420.